Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby, I'm with Fitness is Medicine. Today we're gonna to do another great workout you can do in your home, minimal equipment, easy to follow directions. We're gonna follow a circuit format, so we're gonna move from one exercise to the next with minimal rest, so you're working one muscle group while the last muscle group is resting. Okay, to start off with today, we're gonna to need a set of dumbbells, um, kind of on the medium side, a ball if you have one, otherwise you can do the floor option for your bridge. And we are also going to need a foam roller if you have one. If you don't, you can also um, maybe roll up a couple really thick beach towels, that would work. Um, you can put your feet on maybe a small step stool. I'll show you as we start that. Other than that, that is all we are going to need for today. So remember to come into these workouts warmed up and ready to move. Five to 10 minutes of a cardio workout just to get your heart rate up, get your muscles and joints warmed up and ready for movement and your mindset ready for movement. Okay. We're gonna start with a bridge on the ball again today. We're gonna to walk out to a bridge and we're going to do a chest press. So you can either keep your knee, keep your um, elbows in close to your body like this, or you can have them out like you're lifting a, a dumbbell or a barbell. <sighs> nice and slowly both directions. As far as which hand positioning you use, it doesn't matter. It works your muscles a little bit differently, but most of all, um, use the one that causes less pain. If you are having any pain with it, use the one that doesn't cause pain. Or if neither of them causes pain, you could do one set this way and the set the next time with your elbows in tight. Keep those hips up nice and tall. And 10. All right, good. Walk yourself back up. We'll get those weights out of the way. And then I did forget to mention that we'll need a chair, but most people have chairs around their house. We're gonna do a slow, sit, fast stand. So we're gonna work slow on the eccentric portion of our squat. Stand up fast. So that fast portion is working on power. Sit as slowly as you can, stand up quickly. This is three. Stand up quick. Now, I usually put my hands forward when I'm doing a squat or when I'm doing a sit to stand because it helps with your balance. It kind of gives you a counterbalance if you can stay strong and stay tall in your posture. Now, you may be having trouble on that fast part. That's okay, stand up as quickly as you can. Sometimes it helps to, I tell some of my clients too, Stomp and then stand up, and that kind of helps. Three more. You can also think that you're gonna jump. You're not gonna jump, but that's the motion. That's what you're using. So it's a similar power move. One more. And up. Okay, great. We're going to do another power move. Next, that's also really good for balance. So do this next to something sturdy, either your kitchen counter, a wall, something you can grab if you do lose your balance. I want you to kind of lean forward like you're going to fall forward, but then stomp. And we're going to switch sides. So think about stomping on a bug. What this does is it works on that power to move quickly to catch yourself if you were to trip. If you can't do that kind of fall forward part of this, just work on the stomping. So you can just stomp like this. If you can do this kind of falling forward, it's a good thing to practice catching yourself. Let's do two more on each side. Okay, great. Practice those. Those are really um, important skills that you don't think about needing, but being able to pick your foot up and catch yourself if you do lose your balance or if you catch your toe on something, being able to quickly recover is a really important um, reflex really um, but if we so we can help develop those and keep working on those so that when the time comes and our muscles can react quickly 
All right, next we're gonna do mountain climbers. We're gonna get down on the ground. The other way you can do this is put your elbows on your bed or on a workout bench if you have one so that you're elevated a little. It's a little bit easier and you're also not putting any um, pressure on your wrists if that's an issue. So we're gonna come into a plank like this. And we're gonna, this time we're gonna go slow. I wanna drive those knees up between your elbows, holding that plank. Six, six, keep those hips flat. Eight, nine, 10, and 10. All right, good. Like I said, you can put your elbows on a bench or your bed. That's a great way to kind of modify it. Um, or if you don't have a bench or your bed's not quite working, you can put maybe a towel or something on a chair and accomplish the same thing. Now we're gonna lower down to the ground with that foam roller or something similar. I want you to lie down and put your calves on the foam roller like that. So we're gonna do psoas marches. Your psoas is a muscle that comes down underneath your pelvis. It kind of comes like this. And it can be really weak. Sometimes it's tight, but oftentimes it's weak. And so this is a great way to build that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up into a tiny bridge. You're not gonna come up very far. You're gonna come up like this and march. Now try to hold that bridge. So you're also working your hamstrings here and your glutes. The other way to do this, and it's a little more challenging, is you put a band around your feet and so that you're pulling up against that band. Two more each side. If you need to, you can come down and rest. And good. So if you do a couple and then you need to rest, and then you go up and do a couple more and then you can rest. And that's okay, that's an easy way to kind of um, ease into that one because that one is challenging and part of the challenge is holding that bridge with those hamstrings. Okay, we're gonna stay on the floor for your last one. We're gonna do a core. We're gonna do, um, you know, we've done this before. You're gonna press your hand and your knee, but we're gonna do the opposite today. So we're gonna press across and then switch. So you're pressing your knee and your hand like you're pushing away. You're trying to see who can win. Once, see which one can press the hardest. Breathe. Try to hold it for, you know, three to five seconds. Good, so that's five. You can stop whenever you need to. We're gonna go to 10. Keep breathing. So this is one you can control. So you can, if this is hard, you can press just a little, or you can really just press as hard as you can. This is also working on your hip flexors but we're getting some good core work here without involving your neck, without involving your back. One more on each side. And rest. The other thing you can think about while you're doing that is really pressing your back down into the floor and that really helps engage more of your core, more of your abs. Okay, go through those one or two more times. Try to add maybe a little cardio in between um, one or two minutes maybe five, maybe 10, depending on um, your energy and your time levels. If you have any questions or you need any modifications, please let me know. You can message me privately or leave a message in the comments. Uh, have a great workout, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you.